guys, quick video here from Love of the Grain Workshop. Uh, real quick, if you enjoy the videos that I make, be sure to check out the other videos I have on my YouTube channels. Um, and be sure to like and subscribe uh, so that you get all the notifications. Hit that little notification bell and be sure to leave some comments on what you think about the videos as well. Uh, so today, we've got this beautiful cookie, uh, thick slab, live edge from a pine tree. Um, it's a local fallen tree. <clears throat> it's roughly 45, 50 years old, if I counted the rings correctly. Uh, it's got this nice, long, natural split down the center. Um, it has made it a little bit weak, so on the underside, we've taped it off, uh, and then we put some steel flat bar underneath to hold it uh, and to give it some good support uh, from underneath so it doesn't split any further uh, and to give it support when we put some legs on it. We're going to put little hairpin legs on this uh, underneath for a nice little coffee table. Uh, but to fill this crack, we're going to use some epoxy, two-part epoxy, one-to-one -one ratio by Incredible Solutions. Super easy to use. Um, if you got a little measuring container, you literally go, if you want eight ounces, you do four ounces of one, four ounces of the other till you get to eight ounces, or however much you want to measure, uh, you just double it. So you exact amounts, 10 to 20, uh, et cetera, for that. Um, it's a really good, reasonable product, uh, reasonably priced. It's really good. You can get it on Amazon, um, and they ship out very quickly uh, through their Prime. Uh, if you have that option, it's very easy to use, very easy to clean up. I use these little plastic containers which are reusable because the epoxy doesn't stick to them so if there's any excess, it'll dry in there and then you can break it out real easily uh, and almost is really satisfying actually when you peel it out because can, you can get it out in one piece. Uh, so I always have a pair of gloves and a mixing stick uh, to mix it all with. Uh, along with this, once we do the epoxy and it cures, we're going to put a couple little bow tie, bow tie splints in there. Uh, to give it a really cool look and give it a little bit extra uh, strength on the top side. And then we'll be sealing it with some epoxy or um, polyurethane. So we're going to go ahead and start our mix. Uh, again, one to one ratio. Um, and then pour it in and let it sit for a few hours. Uh, this is generally dries in 12 to 15 hours, fully cured in under 24 hours for sure. Um, and it's really nice. We're going to actually add some cool colors to it. We have a couple different containers and bags of um, black diamond pigment uh, powder pigments. They're mica powder pigments. They come in multitudes of colors. Uh, so we're gonna pick one that we like and use it for it. So we're gonna go ahead and mix and then we'll uh, do another video for the pool. Okay, so we've added two colors to the epoxy. We've got the blue slate, which is a really pretty color. And then we also have silver pearl uh, that we added to the one-to-one -one ratio mix epoxy. Uh, it's got a really pretty iridescent uh, pearlescent look to both of them. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and mix that in. And we'll mix this, this is about 14 ounces, so we're gonna mix this for probably about three to four or five minutes um, or so, making sure we scrape all the edges, scraping all the bottom. Uh, you can see already how pretty that color looks. And it really doesn't take a whole lot of this. Excuse my son, I'm kind of babysitting tonight. <laughs> but um, it really doesn't take a lot uh, of this powder to mix in. Um, I put probably maybe half a teaspoon or so of each of those powders in here to this 14 ounces and it's gonna color it just right. So we'll continue to mix this and then we'll do our pour. Got our color mixed uh, in with the epoxy and mixed it for a few minutes. We can go ahead and start our pour. Now we've got this real wide crack obviously and then we've got a couple smaller ones um, that we're gonna do as well around the outer edge here. They won't do a whole lot, but they'll add a little bit of color. Uh, I'm not really worried about the super tiny ones. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pour that. And now this stuff is typically, I think it's like up to one quarter inch pours, uh, but that's for large surface areas. This actually, since it's such a narrow area, uh, we should be able to get okay to get by with pouring it uh, this deep because basically what it does is as it heats up, um, the more you have, the hotter it gets. And what the hotter it gets, the faster it will cure. And you don't want it to cure too fast because then it'll crack, it'll split. Um, you won't be able to get the bubbles out, things like that. It'll be a mess. Uh, so if we were to leave it in this cup where it's thick and wide, um, it would heat up. You can see it working already, bubbling uh, and creating gases from the heat. So we're going to go ahead and pour. Nice. Another nice feature of these cups is that you can pinch them pretty close together. 
And again, on the bottom side, we just have some tape covering all these cracks um, so that it doesn't leak out. Now, it doesn't always work. This stuff is pretty viscous, uh, if that's the correct word anyway. Um, and so it goes everywhere. So you gotta make sure you got a really good seal underneath with that tape. Ethan singing in the background. And now we'll fill this uh, as much as we can see. Uh, and then we're gonna let it sit because it's gonna go down, the bubbles are gonna come out, it's gonna fill all these little cracks and crevices. Um, and then we'll have to add more. Um, we just wanna be standby because again, with it in this cup, it can cure pretty fast. Okay, so that's pretty full. We'll come, we'll let it sit for a little bit and come back in just a few minutes and top it off. Okay, so it's been probably 30, 40 minutes. Um, we've come back and done probably two more pours um, over this surface uh, and then pop the bubbles with our breath or you can use a torch. Um, but you can see there, it's starting to sink in a little bit more. Um, again, as the bubbles come out, it's gonna sink down more. We've used all the epoxy in the container and it's starting to solidify now after this long. Um, so there's not much we can do now. Uh, what we'll do is tomorrow, we'll just come back and top it off. Because by then all the pores will be hardened, all the holes will be hardened. So all you'll have to fill is that little 30 seconds of a gap um, where it's falling down in. But that's pretty typical on a deep pour like this. Um, and again, we've had no issue with it being that deep because it's such a small crack. So we will come back tomorrow and top it off. So it's been a couple days in the epoxy on the uh, 50 plus year old old growth pine cookie it has hardened and cured. As I stated, we had to go back and add another layer or so the next day uh, because as it was curing, it seeped down more in there, more air bubbles came out, which uh, lowered the amount that was in there. So we had to top it off the next day uh, with a little bit more. As you can see, it's pretty messy right now, but that's not... No issue for our 7-inch side grind sander polisher um, that we're going to use with some 100 grit to get rid of the excess on the top. We will then finder sand it uh, with some 120, 220, uh, and maybe up to a 3, 320 or so. And then we'll add our couple bow ties in here uh, and then polish her off and add some legs. So here we go. Now that I'm covered completely in white dust, it looks like snow or powdered sugar. Uh, we have the slab finished sanded down to the wood again off of the, uh, from the epoxy that was sitting on top. Uh, this is down to a hundred, which on this old hard pine uh, actually feels really soft. Uh, but when you get close, you do see some little swirl marks from the sander. So we're gonna continue to sand this uh, to 120, then 220, and maybe even a little bit more. Uh, depending on what it looks like after that and then we'll add a couple to maybe two or three little inlay bow ties there uh, to give it a cool look and a little extra support um, again as you can see I mean there's a fine dust powder on everything from the epoxy you don't want that in your lungs so make sure that you're wearing a mask uh, it gets everywhere it stinks uh, and you really don't want it in your mouth nose respiratory system so make sure you wear the proper protection while doing this. So we'll be back after uh, we continue sanding.